There are many reasons for wanting to change a specific item's color in an image. You may need to keep your social media page's branding and have your branding colors featured in your images. Or you want to omit a color that doesn't fit your feed's theme. Or you might be selling multiple colors of a product and don't have photos of all the color variations to add to your website's catalog. When it comes to heavy-duty editing and photo manipulation, there is, hands down, no better application than Photoshop CC. And that's what we'll be using in today's guide. Hello friends, welcome back to Life Marketing. We're a digital marketing agency and in this channel, we aim to help small businesses grow. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to isolate and change the color of specific objects from your images. Let's get started. So to give you a better understanding of how colors can be changed in Photoshop, before I show you how to isolate and change the color of a specific object from an image, First, I'm going to show you how to color change an image as a whole. So I have this image as our sample opened here in Photoshop. Since we'll be making alterations to this image, before anything else, let's make sure the layer it's at is unlocked by double-clicking on your image layer. When the lock icon is no longer at the right side of your layer over here, it means that it's unlocked. If you happen to be doing this on an existing Photoshop file and you imported your image after you set up your canvas, your image isn't locked by default and you can skip this step. So to change colors, we need to create adjustment layers. These layers will let you control what shade, how vibrant, or how saturated you want it to be, or what color hue it should lean into, depending on the adjustment layer you create. There are many adjustment layers you can experiment with to get the right color you're aiming for, and all of them are important to use for different types of images and colors. For this image, let's say we want to change it to a shade of purple, so let's set up an adjustment layer for that. At the top left options on your Photoshop window, click on Layer and New Adjustment Layer, or click on the shortcut icon for that which is here at the bottom of our layers window and select solid color. Select the color you want, click OK, and now we've created a color adjustment layer over our image. It's currently a flat solid color layer and we can't see anything under it. So now we want to set our color blend over the image below it. Let's click on this button here that says normal and select the color blend mode hue. And now it's blended our solid color to the layer below it. On a side note, I encourage you to play around with the different blend modes here so you can see which blend mode works best for your image and the color you're trying to achieve. For example, if we select color, we'll get this blend mode. That'll keep everything in the image in the shade of purple, as opposed to hue that'll let us keep our grays and blacks. Select lighten and it'll blend like this and so on. Now I think I want to lower the brightness, so I'm going to create an adjustment layer for that as well. Okay, so for this image, I think we're good. Now what's great about adjustment layers is you can always adjust your settings if you want to change anything. For example, let's change the image color to blue. Go back to your solid color layer, double click on the color box here, and you can now select a different color. The same goes for any other adjustment layer, so let's select the brightness and contrast layer here, and a controls window will show in your screen, allowing you to edit brightness and contrast. Now that we have a better understanding of how color blending works in Photoshop, let's proceed with isolating and changing the color of a specific object from an image. Open your image in Photoshop, then same as our previous image sample, make sure you unlock your image layer by double clicking it. Now on your keyboard, press Command J or Control J if you're using a PC. This will duplicate our image and we want to do that. We want to keep the original layer to serve as the unedited background to the cropped image we'll be making from our duplicate layer. Let's say we want to change the color of this shirt to this color sample here. If you're doing this to have your object follow a specific color from your branding or a different object's color, I strongly recommend loading an image with your reference color into your canvas so when you're adjusting your object, you can get a more accurate color output. Let's set the layer to hide for now while we do some prep work for cropping our object by clicking on this eye icon here. Now we can isolate the object we need to change the color of. To do that, Select the Object Selection tool here on Photoshop's toolbar. If you can't see this icon, your toolbar might have one of the other selection tools selected, which is the Quick Selection tool or the Magic Wand tool. If either of these are currently at your toolbar, just click on the icon and do not let go until these options show up, and then click on the Object Selection tool. Now, with the selection tool on, click and drag your mouse around the object you want to select, and Photoshop's artificial intelligence will then detect and select it. Okay, this is a pretty good start, but you'll notice some things outside of the shirt have been included in the selection, and this is the part where we need to assist Photoshop's AI in selecting our object. 
For example, we want to deselect the part of the model's arm the AI selected. To do that, press and hold Option or Alt on a PC, click and drag it over to deselect. And now I'm going to do the same for the rest of the parts of the images I want to deselect. Now for the parts that the AI missed to select, we're going to press and hold Control and click and drag over the areas we want to add to our selection. Once we're happy with the selection, we can go ahead and isolate our object. On the bottom part of the Layers window here, click on the Add Layer Mask button. At this point, if you hide the layer below our mask, you can see that what's left of the image is our selection and everything else is no longer visible. Now that our object is cropped, we can proceed with editing the color, like we did on our first sample image. On your keyboard, hit Command-G or Control-G if you're using PC. This will make a group to contain the layer of our isolated object layer and all our adjustment layers. By keeping them all in the same group, we're containing all color edits we make within it without affecting the original image, which is outside and in the layer below the color change group. Also, be sure that your reference image is above and outside of your group. You can now set your reference layer back to visible by clicking here and your reference should be visible on the canvas. Now go back to selecting the cropped image layer and on your keyboard, hold down Command or Control on a PC and click on this black area here. You'll notice that this has a little white area in it where the object's figure or outline is matched and you should have your main object once again again selected. Now we can go ahead and create our adjustment layer starting with solid color. For this sample, let's say I want to change it into life's blue, which is in the reference image here. So I'm going to drop our reference images blue and press enter on my keyboard or click OK on my screen. Now we're going to color blend mode and select hue. As you can see, the shirt is still too bright and doesn't match our reference, so I'm going to create a brightness adjustment layer. For every adjustment layer you create, make sure you have your object selected. So once again, I'm going to hold down the command key on my keyboard and click on the black area here, and once again, our object's outline is selected. Click on the Create a New Adjustment Layer button here and select Brightness and Contrast. You should see a window with controls of both brightness and contrast that you can then adjust to get the right brightness to match the color you need your object to be. And done. Now we have a color match of our reference color and our shirt here. Now I thought I'd mention that although Photoshop's selection tool is impressive and will work most of the time, you will have instances of images like this that simply can't be seamlessly selected by Photoshop's artificial intelligence. Or you might be using an older version of Photoshop, namely CS5 and below. For instances like this, you will have to crop the image manually, which I suggest doing via the pen shape tool. After you make a duplicate of your image, select the pen tool or press P on your keyboard. Make sure that shape is selected in the drop down here. You can also use the path option, but I strongly suggest using the shape tool for manual cropping because it creates a shape after you trace over your object. And if ever you need to edit the shape later and revise your object's outline, you can still edit the shape by editing the nodes as opposed to using a path, which won't leave a layer you can edit later on. So you're going to have to trace the whole outline again. Start by clicking on any edge of your primary subject. By doing this, you create what's called a node. Outline your subject by completing a closed shape using your nodes. You can either trace your subject with straight lines or if you need to create a curve, just click your mouse and hold when creating your next node and bend the line you just created by dragging your mouse like so until it takes the shape of the curve in the image. Once you've completely traced over the outline of your subject, right click on the shape you've just created on your canvas and select Make Selection and OK. Now you have a selection that outlines your object. Click on the Create a Mask button over here and now you have a mask layer of your object's outline. Then you can proceed with the following steps we did on our previous image's sample. And done. Photoshop can be confusing at the start, but the more you use it, the easier it gets to navigate through different functions that will help you create next level and unique photo edits for your business. And that's it for today's Photoshop How To. If you learned something and enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up below and subscribe to our channel for more essential digital marketing guides. Once again, this is Jelly from Life Marketing, and I'll catch you in the next one.